Documenting on the EMAR. If you click on the MAR on your menu screen, your medication administration record opens up. I want to orient you to the medication administration record to begin with. We've ordered the medications in this fashion. Scheduled medications are in the top and they're highlighted in blue. Unscheduled medications, like our vaccinations, are also in blue, right beneath the scheduled medications. Our PRN medications, to make them stand out a little better, are always in green. And lastly, our continuous infusions. Something that looks like this is a medication that's auth verified, which means it's already documented. Something like this is an administration window that's pending waiting to be documented against. If you scroll to the right just a little bit, you'll see there's a yellow column. That's the today and now column. All of our unscheduled meds and our PRN meds, you'll see have tasks for today and now every time. Let's talk about medications in general. If this is a new medication that my patient is taking and I need to give that patient some reference information or if I've never given this medication before and I need reference information, it's really simple to get to. Right click on the medication and go to reference manual. And when that comes up, the first tab is called drug reference and that is really provider specific. It gives the nurse details about how to give it and um, what the pharma pharmacokinetics are for that medication. But if I want to hand something to the patient, education leaflet is more patient friendly. It can be given both in English or in Spanish by the click of a button. To print this information, simply right click anywhere on your screen and the print button illuminates and click on the print button. It will print to the printer in your nursing station. And you can now give that to the patient and discuss any education that needs to happen around this medication about what to expect and how we're going to be giving it to them. When I'm finished, I say OK and it returns me back to the medication window. All right, let's talk about giving medications. This is just a, a tablet. I know it's 25 milligrams and it's Toprol. So if I click on that window, it brings up my documentation screen. It populates in the today and the time that this medication was scheduled for, and it populates in that I, which I'm signed in today as test nurse 2, am the one performing this documentation. It defaults in the milligrams, and it defaults in the route as that is profiled by pharmacy. If all of that is correct, I click on the check sign. And you'll see that it now has gone to a complete. And if I refresh my screen, it goes to auth verified. And we've seen that before. Let's say that there's a medication that you would like to reschedule. You're not going to give it at this time, but you'd like to give it a couple of hours later because the patient perhaps is down at a test or unable to have that medication at that time. So what I would do is right click on the administration box and say at the bottom, reschedule this dose. I'm going to schedule it for today and I'm going to schedule it for now, 11 o'clock and I'm going to say OK. And you'll see it has removed that medication from that and moved it to right now at 11 o'clock. Let me demonstrate now documenting this IV piggyback. I'm going to click on the medication window. Again, it defaults in the date and time it was scheduled. It will populate in the person who signed in it will give you your milligrams and your volume and that it is an IV piggyback. You do have to fill in the site. So if I type in right, it will take me and I can document where my IV site is located. It will tell me the recommended infused over minutes. So that's just kind of my double check that I know I'm going to give this over 60 minutes. And then the green check mark is the sign button. 
and again it goes to a complete and when I refresh my screen it will go to off verified. Okay, let me scroll across now and we're going to talk about PRN medications. PRN medications will either say not previously given as down in this morphine or it will say last given and it will tell you how many milligrams and the date and time that it was given so that you can uh, really quickly decide when your patient is due for their next PRN dose. The other thing that it will do if you scroll back so I know that this patient had gotten a dose of this medication at 9 o'clock this morning and their pain level was a 5. I know that at 10 o'clock when I rechecked them they were now down to a 3. So for pain medications it does ask you to verify the response to that medication. Let's document morphine. I'm going to try morphine and see if that works better for my patient. Again, all I do is click on the administration box and it opens up the administration window. You'll notice when you give different medications, different windows are highlighted in yellow, meaning they're mandatory fields. But again, I always look for the date and time and make sure that's correct. For PRN medications, especially if you're not doc documenting in real time, I would need to tell the computer at what time I gave this medication. I am going to document that their pain level is a 6. I'm going to give 2 milligrams IV push and again I have to tell it the site that I gave it to. So I gave it into their right arm IV site. And now I'm going to sign this morphine. Push my screen. It goes to authenticated and verified. Now I want you to notice that I automatically got a PRN response box that looks different than any box I've seen before. Depending on um, your route of administration, either 30 minutes later, in the case like this when it's an IV medication, or one hour later, like the case was in our Tylenol, I can see that I got a PRN response box so that I could document the patient's response to their pain medications. So now I'm going to document my PRN response to this morphine. Again, I click on it just like it's an administration box, but this time it brings up a power form and it asks me, was the PRN medication effective? Yes. And what the patient states their pain level is now and what scale I used. To document on a power form like all others, the green check mark at the top is how you sign off. And when I refresh my screen, now you can see. When I gave them Tylenol, their pain level was a 5 and went to a 3. When I gave this patient morphine, their pain level was a 6. And when I re um, rechecked them, their pain level was a 2. Notice here in the Now column, again, it now says last given at 1030. So I can easily check if 2, 3, 4 hours go by exactly when that last dose of either the Tylenol or the morphine was. So that makes it easy for me to, to decide what they should have next. Now let's talk about IVs. In this screen right now, I can tell that my dopamine, I began that bag at 9.36 today, and I can tell that I began my IV solution at 9.35 this morning. Let's say that it's time for a new bag. I'm going to go to my IV solution and I'm going to click on the I'm going to click on the administration box. What it's going to do is bring up my window to document. And what I'm going to do is click on begin bag. I'm going to hang bag number two. And so when I click on begin bag down at the bottom, you'll see it changed my bag number to say bag number two. I simply need to verify that it's still going into that left arm IV, and I need to say when exactly I hung that new bag. So I'm going to say I hung it at 11. Again, it pre-populates into the rate that's ordered, and I'm going to apply 
and it's going to show me up here what it's going to document that I began my second bag at 11 o'clock and I'm going to sign that. And if I scroll across you can see my completed action and now my authenticated signature. Let's say that heparin is something that the pharmacy mixes and sends to me and I'm ready for my new bag before I can hang it, pharmacy has to send it to me. So in order to request a new bag, I simply right click on this medication, click on med request, I can give it a reason, IV not on unit, need next bag at noon today. And I can say OK. And that's going to send a message to pharmacy letting them know that at noon I'm going to need a new heparin bag so that I can document that. Now let's take a quick look at INO in the interactive view. And let's see how our medications and how our piggybacks and IV fluids can pre-populate in. I'm going to open up my intake and output band. And so already I can see some things happening here. If I double click on the time column, it will pre-populate in some of my IV fluids. So this is my levofloxin that I hung and you can see that it pre-populated in that 100 cc's. You can see that it's pre-populated in my maintenance IV fluid at 80 cc's. I haven't hung my heparin yet so you'll see that's blank but it is listed. All medications that would populate to your intake and output are listed here and you can see my dopamine. So I'm going to click in my 10 o'clock column and again it pulls in the IVs and the IV fluids and the medications that I've given during that time. And if you remember I started my IV at around 930 so that's where you'll notice that I have less than a full hour's volume and so it understands and, and calculates out the difference of what was given during that hour to sign my documentation in my iView. It's again this green check mark and it's located above my menu in my interactive view. And now I've charted my intake and output with three clicks.